Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 6 of the anime series Erased. And holy hell, man, this show is like tension personified, <laughs> you know, in all the right ways. I mean, I was sitting once again on the, the edge of my seat throughout the entirety of this episode. Um, it was just all kinds of awesome sauce, seeing Satoru manning up and going into Airi's house, which is all aflame to save her life and the fact that he has found a, a tried and true ally in her i mean even though she's half succumb half dead from smoke inhalation you know she's dropping her cell phone in his pocket because she knows authorities are going to be involved investigators assuming he has something to do with it and to keep that information from them which would align you know, his being their number one suspect. They already suspect him to begin with, but this would be more solidified proof to that effect because who else could have this mobile phone of his mother's other than him and, and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, I love that she is so unflinching in her resolve to believe him. And, and it's a product of what is, you know, I didn't really touch upon it, but like somewhat ridiculous, the story about her father being suspected of stealing candy and the mother didn't believe him, uh, was very sort of self-righteous and thinking of familial honor and personal honor and all those kinds of things. It just seems blown out of proportion and odd, but <laughs> you know, what can you say? Um, whatever the case, this is something that has personally affected Ari along the lines of, I'm going to take the risk because I believe Satoru is worth it, you know, even to risk her own life. And uh, I love that we didn't have to spend too long a time piecing together why she had been gone after whoever this person is this uh seeming bureau bureaucrat guy who was in the pizza shop and everything like that he has managed to swindle his way to look at uh the itinerary on you know basically the work hours thought it was supposed to be there or be home or what have you when he would go home at the end of the day so he could orchestrate the murder of Satoru's mother and make it look like it was him uh you know and, and the fact that id could now recognize him for that in piecing that together and seeing them together, he followed her home and that's why he attempted to murder her as well, you know, um, because as Sotoro pointed out, he, you know, didn't really need to, they already suspect him for the murder of his mother, didn't really need to add to that or, or solidify that in any way, unless it was to cover, you know, the killer to cover his own tracks. So, um, but not only do we have Ari being just a chief ally, I freaking love the introduction of Sawada, who was, I have to admit, I was speculating, you know, he could be <laughs> the next likely candidate for being this killer. Um, I was suspecting him of being like, you know, because we see the killer in episode one, that uh, the time period when Satoru's mother recognizes him spiriting off in a van having left the child he was going to kidnap behind and i was speculating that well if he was a news reporter he could travel around he could get you know around uh basically assaulting and kidnapping kids and he would show up on the scene thereafter because he's the roving news reporter and how would he get around a van and here is a van that we see the killer driving away in and all this kind of stuff and um it was actually quite exciting almost in a psychopath vein to see that he is unflinching in his resolve to be an ally to Satoru as well, because, you know, the call that Satoru's mother put into him got that ball rolling again, put that bug in his ear that, hey, we were wrong. So many years ago, it was not Yuki after all, and now I believe my son was her parting words with him and lets him meet later and figure this out. And unfortunately, she didn't pass on the name of who this person was, but I love that we have these guys on the case, you know, Sawada and Satoru. It really called back to me the excitement I had in episode one, the idea of Satoru and his mother coming upon this case and working in tandem together before her <laughs> penultimate unfortunate demise um, sort of stole that away. And at that point, I hadn't understood quite exactly how the revival time travel thing was meant to play in. Um, but it has been masterful. The show has been a master work and it's just such a shame, <laughs> you know, what ends up happening, befuddling all of Satoru's plans, uh, seeing him in irons and everything like that. Um, I gotta admit, there was a point where, of course, Sawada, he's, he's letting Satoru, uh, stay behind in his office, look over my files, see if you can make sense of things. Maybe, you know, you'll notice something I haven't been able to piece together. And he's spent 
all of his years believing that this was still an open case, that even though it was resolved per the news, per authorities, that he was never quite satisfied, even risking his own being called a madman and obsessive in news circles, in those corporate circles, he could never let it rest. And now to know that something is up and something is amiss, and this is what ended the life of Stoddard's mother, again, seeing them coming together, but I, <laughs> when he goes to the hospital to visit Heidi and get word from her what exactly is going on, how she's doing and everything like that. And and hopefully Case put a face to whoever this person is. It shocked the hell out of me <laughs> when you hear her mother's voice. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, is this somebody working in tandem with the killer? <laughs> was my first thought. Um, it was like shades of like a horror movie. Like, oh my God, it's going to be a living corpse, you know? Like... Man, and then flashing back to why. Uh, again, calling back on that whole ridiculous backdrop story of Irie's father and mother. And it, it's quite interesting in an interpersonal way, in a familial way, how this has affected their family. Um, I guess people split up over less, you know, in, in the real world. So it makes a kind of sense. But I mean... Because Irie's father is seemingly nowhere to be found, of course, I'm almost holding him a suspect as well in all of this. Um, but that's the weird thing. Like, we do see, you know, Irie's mother's faith in her and her faith in Irie's faith in Satoru and everything like that. And, and to give her encouraging words to let her go and, and meet with him, which unfortunately all you know, shatters down once again because the cops are watching her and following her tentatively, um, or at least perhaps the killer, you know, uh, because as she gets out of the hospital, we do see that black car of his, and he is probably the one who gave the heads up. You know, you're trying to figure out who exactly might have informed the cops. Could it have been uh, the boss at the pizza place? Well, no, he, he took the credit for saving Irie and everything like that. And that looks good for law enforcement and whatever. Um, adds up perfectly fine. But of course, who would have known uh, other than Sawada? And I did have a, a very brief <laughs> flinching moment where I was like, did Sawada sell him out? Jerk! <laughs> You know, but of course, no. Um, he is a tried and true ally now as well, as I say. And um, just that idea that, you know, Satoru wants to instill an idea it's not your fault. And he thinks of, you know, what would a hero say? <laughs> he just brought a grin to my face like, man, you're getting arrested and you want to break ties with her to save her life and everything. It is very much like that Spider-Man thing, like that Superman thing. They have to sort of you know, create a, a divide between the hero that they are and, and the person they really are, or, or their, you know, sort of alias. Um, so their loved ones won't be tracked down. And he very much takes on that sort of personification, calling back to uh, an almost Power Rangers <laughs> character, you know. Um, but I mean, just a fantastic episode once again. And his realization at that tail end, that cliffhanger of, there he is. Like, they keep showing this guy, but they show him in a way that it's like, it's hard at least for me to identify him. And I've heard a lot of talk about, um, you know, the OP really gives it entirely away, apparently. I guess if you're familiar with the source material, which I'm largely not, um, I have no idea where this is going. And I'm only just speculating based on the crumbs all throughout the course of the series, every episode. Um, but some people have assured me that it's apparently revealed who it is and uh i don't know if this plays into the whole aspect of you know yuki the wrongfully accused believing his father has something to do with it or not um the interesting thing to me is in all the glimpses we seem to get of this guy you know they had that flashback sequence to episode one where satoru's mother recognized the guy um they had of course this shot of the guy standing under an umbrella as satoru is arrested and sort of recognizes him uh at least as being the guy who walked past him after finding his mother or before finding his mother dead in all of these sequences it looks to me like whoever this killer is he's not that old like if it was the teacher of you know the past uh which has been a, a large sort of pinpointed uh point of speculation that maybe it's the teacher who has all these ins and outs and all these ideas about, you know, these kids coming and going and uh, whatever like that. Um, 
I suppose there's something to that, but it just seems to me like whoever this bureaucratic guy is in the present day, it, you know, unless they're purposely covering up his face because they want to hide his age, he just doesn't quite look like he's that old. I, I almost, in that flashback to episode one, I almost would have thought he's about the same age or maybe just a little bit older than Satoru. Um, but if he was the teacher who was, you know, like an adult back in the day, wouldn't he be like almost gray like Sawada, you know? And this guy doesn't look like that. He doesn't look like he's that aged. He looks rather youthful. So it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, I'm looking at everybody now. <laughs> you know, everybody in the OP. I'm looking at all the faces. I'm looking at everyone in the background, the cops who are guarding ID in the hospital. I'm just looking at everybody eagle-eyed because I'm trying to pinpoint who the hell is this? <laughs> you know? And, um... Just that's what I love. I, I love that we have a revival in this cliffhanger ending. How far back is he going? Is he going back to the 80s? Is he going back to just moments before so he could get out of there before the cops get the drop on him? What the hell is going to happen next? <laughs> you know? And like, man, talk about manipulating the story. That whole thing about Yuki went and, you know, uh, Kayo's parents had apparently beaten her to death and she was freezing and he kidnapped the body, the unconscious body, and then froze it and made her actually die and took pictures of it and because he was a pedophile and he had stuff in his room which Satoru knows he didn't really have and all this kind of stuff. I was like, what the hell? How do you, how do you make up a story like that? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's not covering tracks. That's making, you know, BS up completely out of nowhere. And, um... I don't know. I don't get it. Like, this is what they convicted Yuki on? <laughs> it's all circumstantial. It's all, like, majority of it is made up. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's what I love about this series. It's so damn riveting. I can't wait to figure this out. I can't wait to see who this is. Uh, people, again, assure me that it's obvious as all hell, but I'm still grasping at straws. I mean, I, I can't quite align myself to... The fluidity of the teacher being the guy, I, I feel like it, it looks like a younger guy. Maybe there's two people involved. Maybe there's two killers. Um, I don't quite know, and it's really exciting. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below, as always, uh, what your speculations and your thoughts on this episode are, whether you loved it or hated it, anything goes. Please do not post any spoilers or anything like that of that sort, because I don't want this ruined for me. I really want to be able to see this you know, coming together as a whole and experience that full on. Um, because while I do think, as I was talking with one of you guys in the comments on the last episode, while I do think that mystery aspect, you know, the show would still be highly intriguing, even if that was already revealed and just seeing the character drama and the interplay and the hoops through which Satoru would have to jump, you know, that would still be very interesting and utmost compelling. But this mystery thing, it's got me boggled. I, I can't lay any money down on anybody, <laughs> you know, for certain. I'm suspecting people that are helping Satoru. I'm suspecting people that are in the background. It's like, I, I love it. This is thorough, thorough engagement to the fullest. And damn, <laughs> I can't wait for the next one. So yeah, otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. It's going to be a long, long week. <laughs> and I'll catch you all later. Peace.